Command. Type Trisha. Hello. Yes, can we do a talk with you about your smoking? Okay. How are you today? Pretty good, thank you. So, why don't we just get started? Why don't you tell me a little bit about your smoking behavior? Well, um, I have noticed that um, I'm a swimmer. Well, I swim about uh, three times a week for exercise, um, about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And I've been noticing that um, I've been experiencing some shortness of breath when I swim. And sometimes I don't even go in the pool um, because of it. And sometimes I have to leave the pool early. And then I think the between my health and then this event that happened with my grandson is what really made me want to come in and do something about my smoking. He was uh, recently hospitalized for an asthma attack. And so, of course, his physician does not want him around smoke, even though I try to go outside when I, I take care of him on the weekends. I try to go outside when I smoke, but it's not always convenient to do that. So. That really got my attention, made me think I better come in and see about getting some help. Okay, so I hear you talking about a few things. First is that you really love to swim and the smoking is starting to interfere with your ability to, to swim and do some of the things that you love. Right. And then the second is that your family is really important to you and your grandson in particular. Right. And you want to be able to spend as much time with him as possible and that smoking is starting to be able to kind of get in the way of your, your spending time with him. Right. Um, so, to, just to um, give me a little bit more of an idea of um, where you are, um, if you could just talk to me a little bit about kind of the barriers that you've had and um, what is holding you back from from quitting smoking or what what's getting in your way? Well, <laughs> I tried in the past to stop smoking and failed miserably and so I, I just dread trying again or put it off because of the, the, the withdrawal symptoms. Um, I get very irritable. Um, I think it helps with my stress. When I'm stressed, I think smoking helps calm me down. Um, I worry about gaining weight and I, I have co-workers I smoke with, so those are all basically the reasons that kept me from trying again. Okay, so there, there are definitely positives for you to smoking. And on the one hand, you know, smoking provides you with all these benefits in social situations with your co-workers and a, and a way to handle your stress and things of that nature, but on the other hand, it's really starting to get in the way of some of the other things that are really important to you, like swimming and spending time with your family. Right. Um, so to help me get a better sense of where you are, um, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if that's all right. Okay. Um, and the first is, um, on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being extremely important, mm -hmm. how important is quitting smoking for you? Well, you know, for those two main reasons I came in, I would say pretty important, probably seven or eight. Okay. And then on that same scale, from zero to ten, with ten being really confident, how confident are you that you would be able to quit smoking within, um, say, three months or whatever? I mean, according to your plan as well. Well, if I'm honest, based on my past failures, I'd say probably more like a three or four. Okay. Okay, so you said past failures. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, I've, I've tried about three times in the past, um, and they were just miserable experiences. I just couldn't do it, and then I started smoking again. Okay. Um, and can you just can you describe the that you said miserable experiences? What was that like for you? Oh, I just had terrible withdrawal symptoms such as headaches and nausea, and, and I was just very uh, stressed out, very irritable, um, had difficulty sleeping. Um, so you know, I again I, I would go back to smoking, and then on top of that, I felt like a failure because I couldn't do it. So that's why I. I keep putting it off, but I have tried it three times. 
Okay. So there's something about smoking that really isn't right for you and you want to quit. Right. Um, but it's those withdrawal symptoms that seem to be holding you back from successfully completing. Right. Okay. Um, and I noticed that on your importance scale, you said it was a seven or eight. And you talked about your grandson and your swimming as being reasons for um, for quitting. Is there any other reason that maybe had you as a seven or eight rather than a four, four or five? Well, you know, again, my overall health. Um, you know, I don't want to have any more respiratory respiratory problems. Um, it's just, I think, like I said, what really got my attention was this thing with my grandson. Okay. Um, So, moving forward, um, if you could just take a look at this list of values for me. Okay. Um, and which of any of those values, maybe two or three of them, are stick out to you as being particularly important to you? Well, definitely good parent and grandparent would be very important to me. Um, to be thought of as competent, because I'm usually pretty confident at everything I do. Um, I, I work very hard um, so that I am confident. And in control would be also very important to me. I normally don't have feelings of not being in control and that's why this bothers me so much because I do feel like I have no control over these cigarettes that so they're controlling me. Okay. Um. And so, you, you just mentioned about being in control and how you feel like your cigarettes are in control of you. Um, and earlier you had talked about how the smoking is getting in the way of being a good grandparent because you're not as able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with him. You have to leave him to go and smoke when he's with you. Right. Um, how would you say that your smoking affects your competency? Um, because again, I, I just feel like you know, whatever I usually do, I do well because I, I strive to be a competent person and, and somebody that's reliable. And um, so I guess that's why it bothers me so much that I can't lick this smoking. Okay. So it really frustrates you that this is getting in the way of so many things and that it's kind of infringing on things that are really important to you. Right. Um, so in the past when you've quit smoking, what has worked for you for the period of time that you have quit? Well, the first couple of times were cold turkey, and so um, I've come to the realization that cold turkey does not work for me. The last and final time I tried, I did try some of that Nicorette gum, mm -hmm. um, but oh, I didn't like the taste of it. It has a real peppery taste, and I'm not normally a gum chewer, so I didn't like that aspect of it either. But I was off them the longest amount of time, so I don't know, maybe the gum did help me a little bit, but um, but then again, I experienced all the same kinds of problems, so I went back to smoking. Okay, and also going back to that, when you had quit in the past, how long had, were you successful in quitting? Sorry. Um, the first time, I would say about a week. The second time, about half of that amount of time, three, four days. And then the last time was about two weeks. Okay. And so it seems like um, the nic nicotine replacement therapies seem to help more for you in that transition of getting off of the cigarettes and um, weaning your system off of the addiction to nicotine. Right. Um, have you thought at all about other options that might work a little bit better for you or? Well, I mean, I, you know, I guess that's why I needed to come in and get some help because I, I don't know what's out there and I just know I don't want to do cold turkey and I know I need help. I want someone to help me with this this time. Okay. So if it's all right with you, I know about a few different ways that have worked for clients in the past. Would you mind if I share those with you? Oh, no, I'd love to hear them. Okay. So I can verbally tell them? Or I can email you some information. Okay. Um, or I can give you a website. Oh. Um, which, which of any of those work? Well, I'd love to hear a little bit of information, but then maybe, you know, when I go home today, maybe if I can have a website to look up on and, and educate myself on the various aids out there. Okay. 
Um, so to start out with this nicotine replacement therapy, um, which you tried with the gum, um, but there are also other forms of nicotine replacement therapy. You said you didn't like the peppery taste, right? Um, and you're not much of a gum chewer, right? So you can use the patch, which you stick to your arm, and it releases the nicotine into the um, into like through the skin. Okay. Um, there's also a lozenge, which works very stimul similarly to the um, to the gum, right. so it would release the nicotine through the mucous membrane in your mouth. Okay. Um, there's also an inhaler and a nasal spray. Both of those are prescriptions, so you'd have to get um, a prescription from your physician for those. Okay. Um, for those. Okay. Um, the inhaler um, is like a big cigarette, and so it has cartridges in it, and you would smoke it or inhale it like a cigarette, and it goes the nicotine would go into your bloodstream that way. Okay. Um, and then the nasal spray, nasal spray is also absorbed into the bloodstream, but you would squirt it into your nose like any other. Um, like allergy medicine or something like that. Okay. Do any of those sound like they might be options for you? Gosh, I had no idea that there were so many things out there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe a good starting point for me would be to study up on, on all these options and how they work and the costs and the side effects and because whatever you know, whatever I choose has to be something that's conducive to my work environment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in a lot of meetings, and so it would have to be something that you know wouldn't be obvious. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like an inhaler or something. Okay. Um, so information gathering might be a better start for me. Okay. Um, and earlier I heard you talk about withdrawal symptoms being a big reason why you've um, not succeeded in. In, in quitting your smoking. Um, have you heard about the prescription drugs that are available to help you no. with that? Mm -mm. Would you mind if I told you a little bit no, about that? No, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so the first is um, bupropion, or better known as like Wellbutrin or Zyban. Okay. Um, and it's a low dose of an antidepressant. It's not clear on how it works, but people have been successful in um, quitting smoking because it seems to have to reduce the withdrawal symptoms. Oh. Um, and then the better known one is Chantix. Um, it has about a 40% quit rate. Um, and it interferes with the nicotine receptors in your brain, which means that as you take the Chantix um, and you smoke at the same time, it reduces your pleasure from smoking. And oh. so your brain doesn't want the cigarette business anymore. Um, and so, as I said, that there are high quit rates from that, but there's also um, a minor side effects of depression and some cases of suicide. So, if that was a problem for you, then Chantix might not be a problem. Do either of those sound like they might be? Well, they certainly, yeah, they certainly have my attention, um, especially if they help with the cravings and um, and the Chantix. I have seen in my magazines ads for it, but I had no idea how it worked. Um, yeah, I might be willing to try the, the medication, the other one, bupropion. Bupropion or Wellbutrin would well be the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like maybe the side effects aren't quite as great with that one. Just because it, um, that one is an antidepressant, and so um, we're not just quite as clear on how it works, but it has to help people to succeed in oh. with those with, with withdrawal symptoms. So it's one of those medications that's used for multiple reasons. Exactly. Because I was going to say I don't think I'm depressed, but <laughs> <laughs> but if it helped with the uh, smoking cessation or cessation, um, yeah, that that kind of got my attention. I think that might be something I'd be willing to try. Okay. So moving forward, I've heard you talk about a, a few different options that really seem like. They might work for you. Um, um, the first is that you would really like to study up on the nicotine replacement therapies as well as the prescription drugs to see what might work best for your lifestyle and your work environment. Right. Um, and then the second would be to really talk with your physician about um, these prescription drugs and what um, would, would work best for you and what he or she might feel. Um, would be a good option for you given your medical history. Okay. Um, do you have any other options or ideas that you might add to that? No, no, I can't think of anything. 
um, I guess another thing I'm thinking about is I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with my hands because, you know, that's another, it's so much of a habit. Um, so as we move forward, where do you see yourself with your smoking within, say, the next three months? When would you like to kind of set a date or move forward with that? Gosh, I hadn't thought about that, but I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking it'd be nice in three months if I could be totally, totally done. yes. Okay. I have some weddings coming up this summer and that would be, uh, yeah, a good time to have that over and done with. So you're really looking forward to quitting the smoking and just ridding yourself of that control that oh, it has yes, in your life. Absolutely. Because I hate that. Because like I said, I'm normally a very in control person and very competent and it just bugs me that I can't lick this darn smoking. Okay. So what, what do you think you could do within like the next week or so to help you move forward towards quitting? Well, I, I'm interested in this website that you said that okay. you could make me aware of um, because I, I like to educate myself first on what's out there and how it works and like I said, side effects and everything. And then um, maybe choose, you know, the, the A that I think is going to be, again, most conducive to my life and my work environment and then um, go from there okay. and then maybe see my doctor about the, the medication. All right. And so what do, you, what do you think you could do within the next day or so? Um, well, I'd like to start reading up on all this material and I'll call, make an appointment with my doctor and see if I can get a prescription for the um, Propion. Okay. Um, well, the website that I mentioned earlier was the, just simply the American Cancer Society is a very good website. Okay. And the Center for Disease Control is also a very good website for oh. um, information about quitting smoking, all these different types of therapies and things that you might go through and symptoms that you might experience and how you can overcome those. Okay. Um, so, um, if you could just tell me, re re rephrase for me what, you pl what your plans are for the next day or so and then the next couple of weeks. Well, I'm definitely going to look up on these sites that, that you recommended and call my doctor and try to, try to get that prescription. He'll probably want me to come in but, um, and try to get that prescription and get going on that. Okay. Um, and how hopeful are you in being able to quit? Well, I'm, I'm encouraged. Mm -hmm. I definitely am encouraged because I think the difference this time is I'm going to have help. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to meeting with you again so, you know, we can talk about what aid I think is going to work for me and, and just to get the ball rolling. Okay. That's awesome. I'm really, I'm really glad to hear that you're feeling encouraged about this and it sounds like your confidence has moved up. Is that correct? I would say substantially yes. Oh, good. Um, I just finished early.